as uh, we look at your word, I'm praying, Lord, change us and by the power of the Spirit and the Lord, make us more like Jesus, we ask in your wonderful name. Everyone said, yeah. turn to your neighbour and say, you're very good looking. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say you're very rich. Take me out for lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. That was fantastic. If you don't, uh, lift, put up your hand if you don't have an outline to follow. Just lift your hand right up and I'll get an outline for you. Tonight at 5 o'clock, we've got one of my favorite speakers coming here at 5. His name is Alwyn Matt. He is a young guy, got saved in the Middle East, and... Uh, he felt God calling him to come to Australia from the Middle East to reach people for Jesus. He's been doing that. He has downpour camps out in the middle of nowhere for a bunch of young people and isolated churches. He started a brand new church on the northern part of Brisbane and God's blessing it abundantly. And he's going to be with us tonight at 5 o'clock. Everyone say 5 o'clock. Now, there's no soccer on tonight, is there? You know, not, we don't have to watch the UK move past the semi-final. But tonight at 5 o'clock, you, you will be really... He's full of energy. He's absolutely full of energy. He's going to be fantastic. And if he prays for people tonight, the service will finish at 11 o'clock. Okay. Well, we had a great time last Sunday night. I really, really, God did something wonderful. Of all those people that came for the altar call last Sunday night was just wonderful what God did, and I'm believing for a really good time tonight. Next Sunday morning, got a special guest speaker here, Jeff Barnes, and Jeff's going to tell his story about his walk and his dependence on God as he walked through a sickness which was a sickness of death. And uh, he'll be with us next Sunday morning. So God's doing some good things. Now, one of the reasons you fill in one of your connection cards is we actually, um, on, these, on these connection cards, if you fill in your email address, hopefully you get onto our weekly uh, email that I'll send out to you, a message uh, I send out once a week. If you're not receiving that and you would like to, that's one of the good reasons for putting your name down. And we're going to tell, us, tell the Dennis Evans story on Monday. And this is Dennis. Dennis, look at me, Dennis. This is Dennis. Put your arm up. People call him Dennis the Menace, but that is very rude. You should never call him that. But Dennis tells a really, a really good story on the faith of believing for your finances for breakthrough. And he tells his story. It's a very good story of how he leaned on God when everything looked impossible and God gave him a really powerful breakthrough. So that's a good reason to put your name down and to uh, receive an email this week. Okay. You're doing good. You're doing good? Come on, talk to me. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, every single week, I thank God for every person that comes to this church. It is an honour and a privilege for me to serve you in this way. And I, I, I take it... I take it seriously as I share the word of God with you. It's a great honour for me to be able to do that. And to be honest, I'm amazed what God is doing in your life. You know, I'm always amazed. We hear so many positive stories and uh, God's doing some wonderful things. So we've been doing a series called Overcoming Temptation, A Way Out. And uh, over the last few weeks, this is the final week, and over the last few Sundays... We've been talking about some principles about how do you find a way out of temptation. How many of you remember, it's not a sin to be tempted, okay? And it's not a sin to be tempted. God never tempts us. It's often our own desires. If we submit to God, we resist the work of the enemy. No one is above temptation. We spoke about that one week. We, you know, we've got, we cannot say we're above it. We've got to keep on our guard. And what you feed grows and what you starve dies. And so this week, I, I want to talk about a topic about what do we do? How do we feed our spirit? And uh, I think today's topic is perhaps one of the most important topics in our series. Because everyone battles temptation. Everybody. Every one of us battles temptation. And at some level, you will face temptation 
and it might be a bit of a plague on your life, or whatever it may be, it may be in your family, but God is able to provide a way out. Now, we've got some Bible verses here, it's in your notes, it's up on the screen, and I would love for us to read this together. This has been our core verse, and I believe it has a, it gives us hope. These verses give us hope and power. Ready? Can we read this together? Okay. No temptation has overtaken you except what is Absolutely great promise for every one of us that God is faithful. No matter what you're facing, whatever temptation comes your way, whatever that situation is, and it doesn't matter how far you are in that temptation, and you may feel as if you're drowning, God is faithful. Okay? And He will find a way out for you. Do you know how to say amen to that? So today I want to talk about feeding your spirit. Now, I think for believers, you can be strong for a season and be purposeful about feeding your spirit. And uh, I think you can withstand temptation. But if temptation keeps coming on you constantly, sometimes what will happen if you're not prepared, if you're not ready, if you're not prayed up, that weakness will emerge in your life. And just in a moment of weakness, and suddenly that becomes a weak area in your life. For example, you say, Pastor, you know, you say, look, I just don't want to gamble again, but I just feel so weak. You know, I can't help myself. You know, it becomes a weak area. Or you might say, look, I don't want to be critical, but... You know, I'm just weak in that area. I'm always negative and I, I'm so just broken in that area. I don't know what to do. Or you might say, look, I didn't really want to eat that entire cake. <laughs> but it's so attractive. <laughs> and I know I'm on a weight loss program and I'm skinny, but oh, I just, I'm just so weak in this area. There's this fight going on. So why is it, church? Why is it that my spirit is willing but my flesh is weak. Now, we are weak, and I want you to write it down, but it's not in your notes, that we are weak because we haven't bonded to something that makes us strong. Okay? We're weak because we haven't bonded to something that makes us strong. Let me rephrase it for you to help you understand that. You know, as followers of Jesus... As followers of Jesus, we are vulnerable, we're weak, okay? And the reason we're weak as followers of, Christ, as followers of Jesus, Jesus said because we don't abide in the vine. Now, everyone say abide in the vine. Abide in the vine. Now, you probably don't even understand that image. It's a picture. And yet when Jesus spoke that word to his culture, and they, they grew grapes and they were growing gardens and they, they all nod, nodded with him. And Jesus, Jesus you know, explains it. So what, what does abiding in the vine mean? Okay, so he uses this particular picture. It's a picture of viticulture. That's what growing vines is. And he says, Jesus is the grapevine and you are the branch. Okay? And when you're attached to the grapevine, you receive resources. You receive the power of the Spirit. You receive reassurance. You receive hope. You receive peace. You receive confidence. You receive strength when you are attached to the vine. And so abiding in the vine means you hold on. You adhere to. And I think every person who heard Jesus say it, they all understood that. They all understood that. And in this particular picture, Jesus goes on and says, God the Father is the gardener, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. And then he makes a statement, if you don't bear fruit, the evidence that you are attached, I will cut you off and burn you. 
So the, what he's saying is, what he's saying is, he, he's, he's basically saying the evidence of salvation is that you bear fruit. Okay? That's the evidence of salvation. But then right at the end of Jesus' statement, he pleads with people. He says, come on, come on, abide in me. Come on. You're inv- it's an invitation. It's an invitation to abide in me. And so what is he saying? He's saying to us, don't be superficially attached. That's what he's saying. Don't be superficially attached. You know, you might go to church, you might read the Bible, you might be devoted, you might talk about Jesus, but you may not be a true believer. Don't be superficial. That's what he's saying. Because Jesus doesn't want unfruitful followers of Jesus. Right? He wants fruitful followers. That's what he's saying there. And so when we say... God, I fall into temptation, I'm you know, I'm not a fruitful Christian, I feel so weak. The answer is because we haven't bonded with something that makes us strong. Okay? You got that? Is that alright? Yeah. So Jesus would say to Judas, how many people know the story of Judas? Yeah. Judas went and heard every message that Jesus preached. Judas went to church, to the synagogues and watched Jesus. He walked with the guys. He was an apostle. He ate with them. But he was not bonded. He was not attached to the vine. He was fruitless. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you are vulnerable if you are not attached to Jesus. And so this morning, I want to talk about how can we feed our spirit so we can be bonded, super glue, not sticky tape. Is that all right? Is that okay? How about this side over here? Is that all right? Is that all right? Do you want me to sing a song instead? No? Okay, right here. Let's move on. Okay, now, this is really interesting. Out of Vancouver, there's a guy called Bruce Alexander. I've got a picture of this guy here. And uh, so this is a bit of science. Science warning. Okay. Now, this guy, he's produced a book called The uh, Globalization of Addiction. And it's really interesting. In 1980... And uh, what they do is they have uh, lab rats. You know the little white things you see in movies and um, they do all tests on them. So in the 1980s, what they did was um, they got a bunch of lab rats and they put water in one of the containers and they put cocaine mixed in with the water in the other, in the other container and they measured what would happen. 100% of these lab rats went straight to the cocaine, got addicted, drug addicts, and they all died, okay? So that was in 1980s. So Bruce comes along and, um, and he thinks about it for a moment and in fact he thought, I want to add something else into the mix because there was nothing for the rats to adhere to that was positive for them. So, he came up with an alternative. So he had the normal water, he had the co- cocaine, <laughs> cocaine laced water for the druggies, okay? But then he had Disneyland for rats. And like tins, little gamey things, little fake pictures, and, and, and they, there was this labyrinth and the idea was they put the rats in and they worked.